All right, what's up everybody, it's Josh. I decided to make this video because I got so many comments on my G15 versus Legion 5 Pro video of people saying stuff like, oh, if you had swapped the RAM in your Legion, it would have ran circles around the G15. And, and that's just completely false. <laughs> uh, and it made me realize that there's a lot of misinformation out there on RAM and how it actually affects things. So let's start with what this slow RAM is. Single rank X16, usually seen as one RX16, high density RAM in laptops. Basically what it is, is it has all the banks on one side of the RAM stick. That's one of the easier ways to identify it, but the easiest way obviously is to look at the sticker and look for that 1RX16. This type of RAM is infamously seen in the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro and some of the Asus laptops like the Strix series. So we're gonna see how this compares to fast RAM, usually seen as single rank X8 or dual rank X8. Dual rank being slightly better. These are usually seen as 1RX8 or 2RX8 on the sticker and usually has banks on both sides of the RAM stick. And it's just, these are much more commonly seen in laptops with 32 gigabyte configurations from manufacturers or from aftermarket parts. So the general consensus is that faster RAM means faster laptop, which means more FPS. But does it really make a difference? Uh, well, we're about to see. By the way, I'd really appreciate if you could like and subscribe. My main goal is to try my best to put out accurate information about gaming laptops and in a more practical real life sense, but with data to back it. So um, every subscription, every comment, every like helps the channel grow. Thanks so much, guys. Let's get back to it. So before we even get into the benchmarks, I'm going to spoil it a little bit. Faster RAM helps performance at 1080p, but faster RAM barely does anything at QHD and above, especially when you're playing games at higher graphic settings. Essentially, better RAM helps your CPU and not really your GPU, but it does get a little more complicated with things like frame stability, and we're going to take a look at that. So when I responded to some of the haters on my Legion 5 Pro video about how this actually works, you know, they usually just came back with, wow, did you even watch Jared's tech video on RAM? Uh, you would have known that replacing the RAM makes everything perform better. But even in that exact video, which is amazing, by the way, this guy does so much research and testing. It's incredible. Um, but yeah, even in this video, he shows the same thing happening. At 1080p, you see performance improvements, and then he switches over to, you know, higher GPU bound games like Cyberpunk, and he's playing them in native resolution, and there's no change. In fact, he even loses some FPS. And this is all after switching from slow 1RX16 RAM to fast single rank X8 RAM. So I'm not really sure where this message came from or why it's so widespread in the gaming laptop community, but I hope this video helps stop some of that misinformation because honestly, I'm just tired of explaining this to people and uh, I'm about to show it through lots of recorded data and benchmarks. So here we go. I know some people are gonna comment like, well, I got like a 30 FPS difference on Cyberpunk after swapping my RAM. And you're probably gonna hear that same thing from some people on Reddit and some elitists out there that are just trying to justify the two three hundred dollars they spent on ram which is okay and it's it's still you you do get an improvement but it's not that much i mean i even had a guy comment on my legion 5 pro video saying how he swapped the ram in his and got like a 20 fps boost in horizon zero dawn at native resolution which i'm like okay well that's impossible but you know he tried to come back with screenshots and all this stuff i later stumbled upon his benchmarks on discord and it turns out he had just been heavily overclocking his gpu so i mean it's like hard to even trust some of these people and and a lot of it does come down like I said, to justifying their purchase, which is cool. I mean, I totally get it. Some of these RAM kits are really expensive and they do increase performance, but you just cannot expect like a 20, 30% performance increase, especially at native resolution. That's just super unrealistic from a RAM upgrade. And that's the point of this video. So anyways, let's get to it. So here's how we're going to test it. I've got the Lenovo Legion 7i here uh, with an Intel i7 11800H and a NVIDIA RTX 3070. And before you even say, but Ryzen is more RAM sensitive, it doesn't affect Intel as much. Before you say that, I did compare to other results from people with Ryzen systems. This is just all I had at the time and it still holds true. So for example here, so Jared's tech, uh, he swapped his RAM and gained a 9% increase in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p. I did the same thing and I gained a 13% increase from the RAM swap at 1080p. So the difference is still there even for Intel. Um, it's not just a Ryzen thing. So maybe Ryzen is more sensitive in some games. I'm not too sure, but Intel is just as sensitive it seems. So, you know, I don't want people to think that I just cherry picked this laptop uh, to try and prove a point. This one is just what I had to test with and it happened to have come with the super slow RAM similar to what Jared's tech had in his Legion 5 Pro because even my Legion 5 Pro had actually a lot faster RAM than his and it scored closer to what he did after he swapped his which is a whole different topic because single rank x16 with fast sub timings can actually perform pretty close to single rank x8 but that's a whole nother conversation. Anyways this is what you want to look for in your timings. I'm going to put up the super slow timings and I'm going to put up the fast faster timings 
just so you can see what I'm talking about. So I tested six different games that offer sort of a variety of being CPU bound and GPU bound uh, before and after replacing the RAM. So the one I used is the 2RX8 dual rank RAM from Crucial. Um, this RAM has great timings and it's just, um, and you can find it on Amazon. It's decently priced too. And it's a very easy upgrade. Uh, just open up the Legion, take the old RAM out, put the new one in and boom, there you go. Um, so I ran all these benchmarks multiple times, gathering averages on frame rate and 1% lows and I even compared my data to benchmarks of others with similar systems with similar upgrades just to make sure that nothing was wonky or anything looked off it all looked correct so here is the proof for the pudding so here's how to read these graphs um, on the left here the new RAM is at the top uh, that's the 32 gigabyte 2RX8 here which is dual rank X8 the bottom is the 16 gigabyte single rank X16 RAM with the slow timings so first we have shadow the Tomb Raider here um, at the highest preset at native resolution 1600p and we are in dgpu mode so we're getting 89 fps with the dual rank ram and 91 with the single rank so we actually lost some performance here which is kind of crazy that we went from something with super slow timings to super fast timings and lost performance uh, but this is one of the few cases where that actually happened so i went down to the medium preset just to see um, i was like okay this can't happen on every preset so but dropping down to the medium preset um, we actually do see a 1 FPS increase here, a, a decent increase to our 1% lows as well. Uh, so keep in mind our 1% lows is like the frame stability, kind of affects the smoothness a little bit, so um, it could definitely affect your overall gameplay for sure. Now in 1080p, just like I was saying, this is where the biggest difference is. I saw a bigger difference here than even Jared's tech saw when he replaced the RAM in his Legion 5 Pro, and that was AMD. So it definitely does translate to Intel as well. Um, we went from 123 FPS to 139 um, and our 1% lows went way up as well. So that was actually really cool to see. But again, this is 1080p, uh, which is not the native resolution of this laptop, nor was it really designed to play games at 1080p. All right, so Horizon Zero Dawn, native resolution. Um, this is another one where we actually lost one FPS. Um, and this is sort of margin of error. Really overall, just performance did not change um, in this game. But then you drop it now to 1080p. There you go. You have a 10 FPS increase, 106 instead of 96. 1% lows are also almost 10 FPS higher. That's your overall frame stability. So again, 1080p looking great. Forza Horizon 5, this is the extreme preset with V-Sync off. At native resolution, we saw about a 2 FPS increase here and actually saw some 1% low increase as well, uh, 61 FPS instead of 55. And then drop it down to 1440p, it does go up a little bit more, um, 74 instead of 71 FPS, and our 1% lows also went up about 9 FPS. Drop it down to 1080p and now we're hitting 86 FPS instead of 82. 1% um, lows are a good bit better here and that's good to see. Now CSGO, this is one I was expecting to be more um, RAM dependent and see more of a difference. Um, and we did a little bit at native resolution. Uh, we're at 391 instead of 365. Now at, you know, at frame rates this high anyway, you're not even going to tell that difference, but it was there. Also don't really know what happened with my 1% lows here. They kind of stayed the same and they're super low. So uh, maybe something just went wrong with the benchmark, but about the same there. And then at 1080p, uh, 471 instead of 451. Again, that's so high. You don't probably won't notice, but 1% uh, lows did increase a little bit there. Now, Control is a super GPU heavy game. Um, I didn't expect much here, nor did I see much at native resolution. FPS stayed the same on average, 40 FPS, while 1% lows did go up one. Uh, we turned DLSS on and still it's the same, 71 FPS on average. In 1080p though, we actually gained 11 FPS here. Uh, this is the low preset uh, with ray tracing on medium, 111 FPS versus 100 FPS on the old RAM. And then Call of Duty Warzone, uh, this is max settings with ray tracing on. At native resolution, we are getting 89 FPS on the new RAM, 85 on the old RAM. 1% uh, lows went way up in this game. Uh, this is one of the few where 1% lows were up a lot at native res. Um, drop it down to 1080p. We now see a 10 FPS increase and another huge increase in 1% lows. We're looking at a 22 FPS increase in 1% lows, uh, which is really cool. So yeah, that's it. That was a good uh, variety of CPU and GPU dependent games. So 
As you can see um, across the board at 1080p, the new RAM with the dual rank configuration gives you a, about an 8.8% increase on average. Um, that's the increase across all games. That's actually not bad. So if you have a laptop with a 1080p display, you know, I think that's that's worth doing. However, a lot of laptops like the Legion 5 Pro, the Asus Zephyrus G15, the Legion 7, um, these are all 1440p laptops or 1600p. So not seeing too much there. A 3% increase at 1440p, 1.9% at 1600p. To me, that's just not worth it. Um, at that point, you're kind of just spending 150, 200 bucks for like one FPS. Um, at that point, you might as well have just overclocked a little bit more or lifted the back of your laptop off the table a little bit and probably saw more of an increase than swapping your RAM. But I also wanted to see the average increase in 1% lows um, because that seems to be another big factor here. So the 1% lows, this is like your overall frame stability. That went up quite a bit at 1080p. 23% increase in 1% lows at 1080p after the new RAM. But however, again, at 1440p, QHD native resolution for these laptops, uh, it's like an 8% increase. And for your 1% lows, like that's nice, but that's not, you're probably not going to notice a difference. I would bet money that you wouldn't notice a difference for the 1% lows. All right, so there you have it. Um, as you can see, you know, RAM, like I was saying, at 1080p, I think it's absolutely worth trying out in your system if that's what you play your games at. But the thing is, you know, the Legion 5 Pro and the Legion 7, a lot of Asus laptops, they're all natively QHD, so it doesn't really make as much sense to upgrade the RAM unless you're just really trying to squeeze out every last bit of performance out of your laptop. Um, I mean, I guarantee you won't notice it, but at least maybe the 1% lows in some games you might notice. You might notice a little more smoothness but i just i would bet money that 99 percent of everyone probably would not see a difference after upgrading the ram uh, when playing at qhd and that's what these laptops were made to play at that's their native resolution you know dropping it down to 1080p uh, it looks a little blurrier when the screen is natively qhd than it would on a 1080p laptop so that's just my take on it i mean if you want that extra two fps you want that little bump in one percent lows sure go for it and this can get a little more complicated there is even one rx16 ram out there that actually has pretty decent sub timings seems to be a little bit of a lottery so my legion 5 pro sub timings even though it was one rx 16 it was about the same as your average single rank x8 ram and it performed that way too i mean it might have not had the full effect of having single rank ram but it performed really well it actually performed about just as good if not better than jared's tech's legion 5 pro after he swapped the ram and that was just with my stock one rx 16 ram in the legion 5 pro so always check your sub timings first uh just download zen timings if you're on a AMD system and I think it's CPU Z is what you want to check on a Intel system. This is what you want to look for. These are fast sub timings. TRFC value seems to help a lot and that's what you want to look for. And now with 2022 laptops, you've got DDR5 RAM. Um, single rank X16 RAM doesn't even really matter on DDR5. Jared's Tech did a whole video on it and there's really no difference anymore. So if you have a 2022 laptop, you really don't even have to worry about any of this. But yeah, there you have it. At the end of the day, it's really up to you what you want to do with your laptop, what you want to upgrade. I just want to put the information out there because I just saw so much misinformation spreading about RAM and how much it really affects performance to the point where people are discrediting a whole review I made because of that. You know, I just thought that was ridiculous. So next time some guy on Reddit tells you that your laptop's underperforming only because you haven't changed your RAM, maybe show this to him. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you guys will subscribe because I have a lot more laptop videos coming out soon. Uh, a lot of comparisons to 3070s and 3080s and trying to also get my hands on some of these 2022 laptops so stay tuned for that until then see you guys next time